Today I wanted to take a look at the 2002 film Insomnia. This is directed by Christopher Nolan and it was released by Warner Brothers Pictures. This is actually a remake of a Norwegian film which to my understanding is actually a lot darker than the American remake. And to date this is the only film which Christopher Nolan has written in which he does not share writing credits. He did work on the screenplay but for some reason he was not credited. The film features Al Pacino as one of the main characters, Will, who is a detective from Los Angeles who was called into Alaska to assist with a uh, murder investigation of a 16-year-old girl. Obviously the town in which this is set is just a very quiet, sleepy town, um, so this event has pretty much just shocked everyone. Um, it's implied that things like this really do not happen there other than the occasional uh, drunk or speeding ticket, there really isn't much excitement as far as things for the police to do. <laughs> we also have uh, Robin Williams playing Walter Finch who uh, within this same year, um, 2002, is playing um, another dark role. Um, I believe it was earlier that year in which he uh, played a mentally disturbed man in the film Insomnia. But uh, in this film he's playing a novelist. Um, he's also obviously the uh, subject of Will's uh, investigation. So throughout the course of the film we discover that Walter had uh, somewhat of a rapport or a friendship with uh, Kay, the uh, slain girl. Um, she was obviously an admirer of his work. She had numerous books uh, in her room. Uh, she also had, um, I guess you could say, very expensive gifts which um, a high school girl wouldn't be able to afford on her own. Um, designer dresses, jewelry, things like that. So. Walter obviously becomes a suspect, and it's actually while Will's team is moving in on Walter's cabin that um, someone accidentally fires a shot off. Everyone just kind of rushes up to the house to make an entrance before uh, Walter makes his exit. And it's due to sleep deprivation that uh, Will is just kind of not really quite focused or easily confused. He accidentally shoots his partner and later uh, kills him in order to cover his mistake, but this is actually observed by Walter who uh, decides to use this as leverage um, with the whole um, ideology that they're both good people, they've just made mistakes and they shouldn't be punished for it, so they need a way out of it so that they can walk away from the situation and continue with their lives. Walter basically uh, devises a plan in order to let Kay's boyfriend take the fall for the murder. Uh, this part of the plot to a degree reminds me of Alfred Hitchcock's Strangers on a Train. Um, obviously in this situation they're not uh, swapping murders uh, so that they can't be tied back by motive, but rather uh, we have two uh, people who have done wrong. Uh, they're still working together, similar to Strangers on a Train, except they've got a different fall guy. So one would assume, other than the fact that Will uh, murdered his partner to cover up that he accidentally shot him, which is very extreme, but one would think what would drive a person to do this, and um, it's mentioned early on in the film that he's actually under investigation by internal affairs uh, because he planted uh, police evidence on a suspect uh, because there was, uh, due to circumstantial evidence. It's definitely an interesting film. I really enjoyed this one. I still have not watched the original, although I'm definitely uh, looking forward to, to doing so. I know um, from what I've read some of the slight differences in the film are uh, when uh, Al Pacino's character is trying to uh, scare um, the dead girl's best friend. Um, he's driving erratically um, on the road just to, I guess, kind of scare her into giving information. Um, in the original film, he basically molests her. It definitely does take um, darker turns. I definitely like Robin Williams in these darker roles. He pulls it off very well. A lot of people consider him a uh, comedian or, you know, just a, a funny actor in general, but a lot of people tend to forget that Robin Williams was extremely talented and multifaceted. Um, most people tend to think of him as the comedian. He played these darker roles extremely well. He's very convincing and you can tell that he definitely puts a lot of work uh, and effort into his, his work. Um, he's definitely um, 
by turns convincing as a psychopath, you definitely look at him and you think to yourself, this is not the funny man I grew up watching as a kid. Um, and I actually like that um, in the late 90s, early 2000s, he actually did take this turn to uh, show people that he is capable of so much more. I think it's just kind of difficult not to typecast someone at a certain point, and maybe that's what this was about, is just that uh, he wanted to show people that he was capable of more, maybe he wanted more media roles. Um, of course, throughout his career, he did do roles um, with substance. To my knowledge, um, this is actually the second film Robin Williams has ever done that was set in Alaska. The first one, to my knowledge, being The Big White, which uh, we will look at later this month. I really definitely enjoyed this film. I'm honestly not too sure why it's not part of my film collection. I love, you know, just kind of the whole tense, tense feel of this film. For a slight portion of the film, have this whole mystery mo motif going on, then it becomes a thriller. I wouldn't say that it's a noir film. It does share some elements, but um, it just kind of veers off in a different direction. So oddly enough, Harrison Ford had been considered for the role of Will, which ultimately went to Al Pacino, and I think that was a better casting decision. Um, you know, Pacino definitely is known for those strong, tough guy type roles, and his character in this film, he's very uh, self-assured. He knows the score, he's been doing this job for a long while, and uh, he knows exactly what type of evidence and investigation that he needs to look for and run, so um, he's definitely very much in charge of the situation. Of course, you have this element of stress because he is under this internal affairs investigation um, with the added stress of he is in Alaska and um, the season that he finds himself in, there is constant daylight, so he is suffering from insomnia because he cannot rest well. I'm assuming to some degree the um, the lack of night is throwing him off and um, it's definitely disrupting his focus. It's changing him as a person to some degree. A lot of the film, in my opinion, um, also deals with uh, inner demons. Obviously Will's dealing with his own issues in the past. He's also dealing with um, uh, the present as far as not being able to rest or focus. There's definitely a lot on his plate. It's an extremely well fleshed out character. Of course, um, Walter, his count counterpart, uh, we really don't get to meet him or get to know anything about him other than the fact that he's a writer, so we just kind of have to take at face value that he's this good guy that made a bad decision and maybe he is and maybe he isn't. Maybe there really is something darker going on there. To a degree, uh, the film definitely does not spoon feed you entirely. It uh, does leave a lot of open ends for interpretation um, for you to just kind of figure out and decide um, who these people are, where they're going, and what they're doing. But that is all I have for you guys today, and I will talk to you later.